in conversation with. My name is Sinead McCrowan and I'm delighted to be back this week with another episode. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in live or if you are watching back on the recorded version, you're also very welcome. Just before we get started today, I will bring your attention to the Q&A function that you can see down at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions for our speakers today, please feel free to put them in the Q&A function and we will absolutely try to get to them. And we have a great episode ahead today at four o'clock in just a couple of moments time, I'm going to welcome Lauren Farrell into the chat. who is currently studying early childhood education in DCU. Um, and then at half past four, I'm going to welcome Grace Kelly into the call, who is studying global business. So we kind of run it in two half an hour slots. Um, and as I said, you know, just feel free to ask any questions that you want. This is your chance to ask, um, you know, a student who's actually studying these courses, anything you want, whether that's about modules, timetables, career paths, or even internships, um, please do let us know any questions that you have. So without further ado, I'm going to let Lauren into the chat. So let me see if this works. Okay, I'm going to promote you to a panelist, Lauren. Hello, how are you? Hey, Lauren, how are you keeping? Not too bad. Good, good. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your Wednesday evening. I'm sure a very busy evening for you um, to come on and chat to us live. We have a couple of people tuning in who are, I'm sure, only more than excited to hear all about your course. Um, and I'm sure you'll do it absolute justice in explain, explaining everything about it. So um, if we want to go back to the very start, say you, if you go back to your sixth year self, how did you end up picking early childhood education as something to put on your CAO? Um, so I came in through the CAO, I did sixth year and came straight in that way. Um, my first choice was primary school teaching in DCU and then and obviously I had all the other options in as well and I had early childhood as my backup. Um, so obviously here I am now with my backup choice but now that I'm actually in the course you know, I've absolutely fallen in love with it and I absolutely wouldn't change it for the world and you know when I was in sixth year people would always say what's where you won't pass you and it's meant to be and all this sort of crack and you know it'll wreck your head because you're like well this is my dream course and this is what I want but now that you're there I completely understand what they mean so I wouldn't be too worried or too pressured you know there's back ways into absolutely everything and you know you might even find something that you love in what you're doing and you mightn't want to do your first choice at all then in the end. Exactly. That happens, you know, with a lot of people, you know, not everyone is going to get their first choice on the CAO and that's okay. You know, sometimes you might want to end up transferring courses, but other times like yourself, you could end up going, actually, I think this is for me. And I think especially DCU is like such a lovely and warm university that often, no matter what course you're doing in there, you're probably going to have a good time. Um, but was working with kids something you knew that you always wanted to do or did you kind of just come to that realization maybe closer to the end of sixth year? Yeah, absolutely. I would have done um, swimming instructing and stuff when I was younger and I would have been a speech and drama assistant as well. So I always would have had experience and my mom is a child minder as well. So, you know, your sitting room was never your actual sitting room. There was always children in the house and I knew that I kind of wanted to be able to teach and always wanted to help. And I was talking to mommy about it the other day and she was like, when you were younger, you know, you'd be writing down things and the you'd be ticking them off and, you know, a 10 out of 10 and all this sort of stuff, always trying to correct and everything. <laughs> Um, so it absolutely was something I always wanted to do and you know sometimes when you're growing up as well people would always say Jesus you'd make a great teacher or God you'd be you'd be great working with people or working with kids so absolutely 100% always wanted to do it yeah something in your blood by the sounds of it <laughs> and definitely like a, a passion that you'd want to follow which is lovely um so for anyone who's maybe listening in today and does want to do early childhood education do you want to talk us through the kind of setup of the course it's a four-year course um so what is every year like what does that look like from first year up to final year yeah so basically every year is split into two semesters so before Christmas and after Christmas and in your first semester every year you'll be fully on campus doing all your modules you'll have maybe six or seven modules for the year and then in second semester you'll have maybe three or four modules and then you'll go on placement every year which is a massive massive part in this course you know a lot of courses they all go out in placement but I think this really defines it for DCU. This is a four year course and a lot of other early childhood education degrees are only three years in other courses. Um, we spend 216 hours out on placement each year. So, you know, it's a massive, massive amount of time. And really like you can learn all you want in a set in, you know, in your modules and in your lectures, but until you go out 
and you're out in experience you know you learn so much more out there and even you know practical things that people are going to pass on you know there's ladies working in settings they might be there 20 or 30 years and you might say oh yeah well we learned this and then there's kind of a transformation of knowledge we're bringing in our knowledge from our level eight and they're passing on their practical knowledge as well which is absolutely brilliant and um, so every year is like that then you go on placement every year in the second semester. But in third year, in the second semester, there's also an option to do Erasmus as well. So you can go to Belgium or you can go to Norway, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's great. And I'm sure that's something that a lot of students probably haven't heard of before is that you can actually go abroad doing a teaching degree because often that's associated with like, say, just a language degree or maybe a business degree. But you get a chance to go away in the second semester of your third year, which, which is amazing. Is that something that you might think like you might like to do? Yeah, I had applied for it, but it was cancelled this year now because of COVID. So we were absolutely raging. Oh, um, no. Look, these things happened, you know. Yeah. So then in terms of the work placement. So, yeah, I, I read something crazy like you do over a thousand hours of work placement on this course, which is a, a huge amount of hours for in, in only four years. But it's obviously very important for the job because you have to actually work out in places to understand how it works. But it's, it's, it's not all just say working in a crash is you can kind of go into like policy and different things. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that for a student who say isn't sure what area they want to go into, but to know that they have options? Yeah, absolutely. This course is so broad, you know, it's not just you're going to work in a creche or you're going to be an early years educator. There's so many different things. You can be an SNA, you can continue on to the PME to be a primary school teacher. You can work in policy. So you could go in, there's, I know there's a few students in the big start campaign there at the minute. Um, or you could work with TUSLA, which is sort of the inspectors for early years. So they would go in around settings, inspecting and making sure everything is up to the high quality. Um, mm -hmm. So there's so many different places now I think for first to third year you're sort of in settings and you're getting experience out in the sector and then it's policy placement then for final year and then of course you have your dissertation in the final year as well which is kind of like your own research then in an area that you find really interesting yeah deadly if um if we were to talk about say the internships or the work placements in some more detail um probably you and I are probably the same when you heard kind of internship or work placement when you're in secondary school you think oh like making coffees and like you know doing the printing but really in DCU like all of the placements are very hands-on and practical and, and you're given you know responsibilities and roles so could you give us an example of like some things that you have had to do on your on your various work placements yeah absolutely um I think it's a lot different, you know, I went on work experience to um, a setting in TY and you're, current, you're sort of just left there and you're playing with the kids and which is brilliant, you know, you're establishing relationships and everything. But when you're out on placement, you are actually valued as an early years educator. Mm -hmm. And when you go out in first year, you know, you're absolutely petrified. You don't know anyone. You don't know how to interact with kids. But the, the lectures really, really do prepare you. You know, you have so many different modules in preparation for placement and you have a whole semester of college before you go out as well, which is absolutely brilliant. And we have um, we have tutorial groups during that time as well. So if you have any issues at all during placement, you go straight back to your lectures and they will absolutely sit, figure it out for you. Um, but yeah, they every year we're sort of given assessment as well so for first second and third year your placement is pass or fail and then it is graded then afterwards right. so every year you'll have to do observations or plans which all ties in with ASHTER which is the curriculum for early years so you will just communicate with the ladies or the men in the room saying look I'd like to do this plan I'd like to do it with the children they'll say absolutely no problem and then they'll work as a team helping you to implement it and then it really is a reflective piece so you have to go back then to think about what you did how did it work well what would you change the next time and then they'll all be assessed then and you'll have two or three placement visits as well so somebody will come in and they'll watch you with the children they'll watch your interactions with the, both the children and the educators in the room and everything and just see how you're getting on. And it really is just about giving advice and helping you out. There's no sort of like an, an inspection about it or anything like it's not, you know, you wouldn't be too worried about it. It is really yeah. just... Yeah, I love that um, collaborative effort that kind of comes from it as well. You know, you're not thrown in the deep end the minute you start the course. They're not like, okay, here's the group of children, deal with it. You know, you're, you're yeah. taught. Because I know, and like, I would have lots of friends who do like education degrees and, you know, you really are so well prepared to go into these settings. And I'm sure it is 
is like a bit scary on your first day. But, you know, you do have those lectures, as you said, in semester one that really get you ready to go on to, to actually do the placement. As you said, you have people working there already who can help you. And then an inspector of some description who's able to kind of guide you in the right direction. So we just have a question that's come in. So we might as well get to it now while it happens. So someone has asked, are you going to go on and do primary school teaching afterwards? If so, how would you go about doing it? So probably an interesting question, especially for people who might have early childhood as a backup, like, like you did, um, and might want to go on to do teaching. Do you know the route that that would take? Um, yeah, I'm actually, to be honest, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do now. I'm a little bit all over the place. Yeah. Um, but basically, you have to do a TEG exam, which is your Irish exam. That's only after coming in in the last few years. So you have to apply to do your TEG exam. And then once you pass that, then you can apply for your master's in any of the colleges. So you can do it in DCU, I think Marino, I think Limerick or somewhere like that. And then it's a two years master's then to become a primary school teacher then after that. But you have to get your Irish grade obviously in the leave and start first and then the TAG exam as well and I think you need to get a B2 in the TAG exam or something like that I think it could be 60 or 70 percent that you need to get to pass that to get into the master's then. Hmm. Yeah we would say that to people who are interested in going on to maybe doing a master's so whether you're using early childhood as a stepping stone to primary school teaching or maybe you're going to do an arts degree or something we'd say to make sure to definitely focus on the Irish for that year or two or a couple of years that you're in your undergrad because you will need to have like an Irish assessment so whether you do like outside classes or just keep it up in everyday conversation that's certainly just something to look at but thanks Mill, for answering that as, as we said there is a Q&A function for anyone who wants to ask Lauren something while she's here uh, while you have her for the next couple of minutes um so in, you said in terms of assessment then so your placements the first ones pass fail then from there it's graded would you have many exams or continuous assessments in like the first semester of each year to kind of cover um there's sort of a mixture to be honest with you um in in the second semester we don't have any exams at all it is literally just assignments and placement and the board is really really good Do you know there are courses only maybe going for five or six years so they're continually reassessing they're really really strong on um student feedback so every module we do they'll send out a survey they'll say look how did you get on how did you find this assessment what was it cater to your needs and everything and um, so we don't have any exams in the second semester because they just found that it was too much work with placement so we only have exams in the first semester and we have a few assignments and stuff as well in the first semester and um, there is a mixture between continuous assessment and just assignments then as well and the majority of our modules are 10 percent participation too which is really really good because you know you're going to the lectures anyway you're participating you're giving your opinions and you get 10 percent you know of your yeah. overall just for being there which is fantastic yeah to attend as well because obviously it's important to make sure that you're actually there learning the things that you have to learn yeah. um, and then that, that you can't just skip or whatever so then so we kind of covered exams and, that, and that's great and um, so if we're talking about like contact hours and how many hours you're actually sitting in a lecture or this year maybe sitting on, on a zoom or in a breakout room would you be in a lot in, in a lot or like a lot of free time um, we're generally in about four days a week. There is a lot of reading in our course. So they give us an independent study day, which generally might either be a Monday or a Friday, which is fantastic. So we might be in for maybe maybe 20 hours a week, maybe. So we might have maybe one or two lectures and most of our lectures are about two hours long. Um, so we'd be in on campus for that. And then for the Friday, then it would be an independent study day. So you go home, you catch up on all your work, do all your readings for your different modules and just try be as prepared as you can for all your assignments because they'll all pile up then at the end of the semester, you know, yourself like your Christmas exams or whatever. So it's just to be on top of everything really. Sure. We had another question come in and, and it's kind of a broad one and, and the question I was going to get on uh, to a little bit later on, but it, it's, a, it's a lovely question. Why did you choose DCU? So, you know, what made you choose DCU over some other, uh, you know, institutions? Um, part of it was I'm from Carlo and I just wanted to leave. I wanted to get out. You know, you want to be your own person, get away from mom and dad. Um, so that was one of the points. But I also chose it because the early childhood degree is there's a college at home as well and I was thinking about going there but this is a four-year degree in DCU and I just thought it'd be brilliant you know you have that university 
behind you as well. You have such a large access to resources. You know, the libraries are absolutely fantastic. The sports facilities are fantastic. And there's such a strong representative of students as well. I mean, the SU are doing absolutely Trojan work behind the scenes. You know, they're doing absolutely amazing stuff. They're always developing new clubs, societies. You know, if you have any ideas, you say, I want to make this society, I think it'd be really beneficial. Absolutely no problem. And there it is. I just, I fell in love with it, even on the campus tours going around the place. I just, it was just something I always wanted to go to, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. And, and that that is a, a common theme. If anyone listens back to our episodes that we've had from day one, everyone is just uh, proud to be in DCU, which, which I love to hear. Obviously, like I work there. So like, of course, I want to hear that. But like, it really is like the energy around campus, whether you're based on St. Pat's like you would be or in your Glasnevin or in the All Hollows, there just is like a lovely feeling around the place. Um, so staying on on the, the topic of clubs and societies, have you had much involvement yourself in any societies in DCU? Um, no, not really now. Um, I've only been, I've been a class rep now this year, which is fantastic, but I think it's actually amazing as well. You know, the lectures are so helpful, particularly in this course, because there is only about 60 students in our course. So mm -hmm. it's a big, big difference to the likes of maybe a business or the primary school teaching, which there could be four or 500 people in a lecture. Um, yeah. And they're so helpful, you know, like the lectures will be emailing out saying, oh, look, there's a job here, or you could volunteer here, or even one of our lectures emailed out and we're helping out with Bardstown. We're developing an app for children, which is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, not other colleges like other places aren't going to get things like that. It's because of DCU's like partnerships with places like Bardstown that we were able to get these experiences and we were able to be able to get into places like that, which is absolutely fantastic for your CV. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, one of DCU's pillars, um, you know, something that they want to achieve above everything else is to provide a transformative learning experience and that is I think certainly what you've described like it's not just say for early childhood you don't just learn how to manage kids in a crash you know you're talking about developing apps and getting chances to volunteer and going to work placements and working in policy and potentially with TUSFA like it's a really well-rounded experience but someone was also along the same line of thinking of me because a question did come in to ask are you part of any clubs in society so you've kind of answered that do you have time to be a part of them while on your course so if we're taking like a step back it's not just you in particular like I'd, I'd imagine that that's true right like you you could yeah. take I mean with any absolutely. course you can but you would have the time yeah absolutely you know you might only be in college itself for maybe four or five hours a day max really yeah so you have all evening then to go for it Exactly. And as you mentioned, Lauren, there are loads of clubs and societies. There's over 140 of them in DC, which is actually quite a large number, like given the amount of students that we have. Um, and it only takes 20 signatures to set up your own society. So, you know, if you got in there like next year, say if it's a six year listening and there was a, a, an idea that you had for a club or society and it didn't exist yet, you get 20 signatures from randomers around campus with their student number and you can go to clubs and societies and ask for funding to set, to set up that society. So it's a fantastic way. Um, and of course the answer is yes, you can get involved. Even if you're doing a course that's nine to five every day, you'll still have evening events that you can go to or things on the weekend. Um, and in a great way, and as you said, you're even doing your class rep stuff at the minute. So like, I don't know if any students listening now have student council, but like that's something that if you like in school or maybe you're on a green school committee, you can continue on and do something like that in third level you know you don't have to leave absolutely everything behind you when you go to third level like you can bring it in and um, so guys as I said there are the oh there's another question come in and um, and you might not know this Lauren I don't know if you lived on campus but they asked what is the college accommodation like uh, can you walk to where the lectures take place yeah, so there's accommodation on all of the campuses, as far as I know, there is definitely accommodation on the Glass Nevin and the Pats, and I think there is, it could be just for international students on the All Hallows, as far as I know, um, but the Pats is literally not even a stone throw, like you walk outside the door and you could literally touch the building for the campus, like it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. The Glass Nevin is probably, it's probably 10 or 15 minute walk to Pats maybe, is it? Yeah, yeah, I'd say like maybe fifth, I'm a kind of slow walker, 15, 20 minutes, but also there's like Dublin bus routes. Um, there's an intercampus bike scheme if you wanted to cycle. So that's free charge, you just get a bike. Or obviously if you were driving 
as well there's parking but yeah there is on campus yeah there is there's loads of buses and everything as well so it's fantastic and your um student leap card i think that caps at 20 euro a week if you're only using one mode and it could be 30 euro a week i think if you're say you're losing using the lewis and the bus or whatever so it's fantastic but the accommodation is great you know there's such a large number of rooms and then there's a big common room and all the nights out and everything are fantastic i don't know what i'm supposed to be saying this now no of course no absolutely it's student experience um, but yeah, well, that's- that's- the free drinks there are absolutely <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> That's absolutely a part of it. And like a huge way as well, especially for someone, say like yourself, who's like moved moved from Carlo or moved from somewhere further afield who maybe doesn't know anyone in the university, like living on campus, or even if you didn't get on campus accommodation, because it's it's done via a lottery system and obviously there's only a certain number of rooms. And um, you know, there are two or three student villages that are literally two minutes away from campus walking you know you'd be staying there but it's all about meeting people and kind of being able to build that little bubble um for yourself so the questions are yeah. flying in which is absolutely exactly. brilliant you know, there's so many different student ac- accommodations as well there's Shannon and there's a few other ones and you'll always know somebody or get in somewhere that's on Pat's accommodation there's there's bound to be one or two people on your course so you know you're going to make friends no matter what like Exactly, exactly. And again, oh my God, it's like people are anticipating what we're going to say, because there's another question come in that said, did you find it easy to mix with people and to make friends on your course? Yeah, I actually, I did. Now, when I went in first, you know, you walk into a hall and there's 60 random people there and you're like, oh my God, how am I even going to do this? Um, But it was actually grand. Our lecturers were so kind. I actually, I feel like they're nearly like, my parents or something or my grandparents sometimes they were so so kind to us like they had a load of things at the start and they got us up got us talking and stuff and where are you from and how are you and why are you here and all this sort of stuff and you know you make friends within a matter of minutes and obviously your friend groups are going to chop and change a little bit within the less the first couple of months as you get to know people but you know I Genuinely, I always heard people saying it's that you know you make your best friends through college but it really really is true you know I've I've made some absolutely amazing friends through this course. Yeah, so, sorry, my internet cut out there for a second, but I did catch uh, most of that. But you're dead right. You know, lecturers, you know, encourage you to like mix and especially in, in the first couple of weeks in a course like that is a huge uh, priority is to make people feel comfortable. Um, and for anyone who's listening, maybe who's uh, anxious about, say, entering college next year, you know, when it's like maybe will there be a little bit of online learning? And obviously we're not sure what the outlook is going to be. You know, it'll totally depend on the, the government advice, you know, t- and to be as safe as we can. But as you mentioned earlier, Earlier, like the students union who are like basically representing the students body have done so much to keep people engaged online whether it's running like evening events or lunchtime get togethers I actually saw recently that they're doing um a zoom study session so if you didn't want to like study by yourself you could actually log on and just be like almost with people while they study and you know you can say something every now and then like there's you know been a lot of chances to kind of mix with people even though it it has been online for um, yeah. a lot of the year but guys keep the questions coming in and we have a couple of minutes left with Lawrence if there is anything else please do ask and um, I know you kind of said that you weren't sure exactly what you want to do next year um, and that or you know when, whenever you graduate and I, that's the worst question to ask someone who's in front of you it's like <laughs> well what are you doing next because often they're like I have no idea but could you talk us through like some potential paths that a student doing your course could take so it doesn't necessarily have to be you but like people got like who have graduated before you or maybe friends like what sort of routes are they all thinking um yeah there is this course is so broad and so you know you can out you can travel the world with your degree as well which is also a great thing i myself and the girls are thinking of going to dubai to teach for a year or two and save up and travel a bit so hopefully with covid and everything we'll be able to go um you know as soon as you graduate with your degree you can go straight into an early year setting and work in the room you can be a manager or a room leader as well which is really important you know if you only have your level five or your level six I think your level six you can be a room leader but you can't manage your own a crash so your level eight you know you can go out by yourself you can set up something that you really believe in maybe it might be outdoor education like a far school in Norway or something like that if you see there's a gap in the market absolutely go for it and um, you could also be an SNA so that could be with the child in an early year setting or you could work in a primary school with that child with additional needs as well which is fantastic and um, you could also be like a speech and language therapist and um, maybe a play therapist you know there's 
such a wide range. You obviously you can go into policy as well, work with TUSA or the Department of Education and Skills or the DCYA even. You know, there's so much to do. Very broad. So, so you don't necessarily have to know what you want to do upon entering this course. You can yeah, really absolutely. choose what way you want to go from there. Um, one more question or maybe two more before we finish up. Um, any advice for the students listening in today, whether that's you know about applying, whether it's about your time in college, if they can take one thing away from today, along with all the other points that you've made, what's one thing that you'd like for, you know, to stick with them? Um, I think just not to stress too much. You know, sixth year is such an awful time. It really is. And especially with COVID now, you're all online. You missed out last year as well. And I can't, I actually can't even imagine what you're going through. You know, you're after missing out on all these things, you probably, you know, the Debs results, all of these things are going to be postponed. Um, so I think not to stress too much. Do as much as you can. Once you're happy with what the with the effort that you're after making. You know, you don't have to listen to anyone else. Don't feel pressured by, oh, what are you applying for? How many points is that? You know, just whatever makes you happy, absolutely put everything you can into it and absolutely go for it. And I think, you know, if you choose DCU, it, it will be the right choice for you. It really will. It's absolutely transformed who I am as a person. You know, even now, you know, in sixth year, I would never come on to a Zoom with people and talk about <laughs> who I am and what I'm doing. And here I am now, like, absolutely no bother. You know, it really has changed me 100%. Yeah. You're an absolute success story, Lauren, to say the <laughs> least. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. So if there's any questions you can ask, I'll give one more a minute if there is something that you'd like to ask. Lauren, to sum up your, your couple of years in DC so far, is there one memory that you think is the best crack you've ever had in college? I just think all the girls in the course, they're just gassed, like they're so funny. And it really is friends for life, you know, like, We've gone on holidays and stuff together and gone exploring Ireland this summer and exploring the world. And even, you know, people go through a lot during college. College is a hard time. There is a lot of work to do. You know, it's not just, oh, sure, we'll go and we'll go drinking. It is hard work. You know, you have to get your work done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But all of your friends are there to support you. All of your lecturers are there to support you. And it's just fantastic. The relationships and the support that is there with DCU. Thank you, Lauren. And I'll just echo that as well. You know, there's so many supports there available for students, whether it's a free counselling service or the career service, you know, financial assistance, you know, really, once you enter DCU, like you're, you're taken care of. And, and I'd say that's Absolutely. kind of across the board, no matter what course you're doing. So I don't think there's any more questions coming in. So Lauren, I will thank you and I will let you leave and go enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and I'll be back on in just another two minutes time then when I'll welcome Grace in who's studying global business. So Lauren, thanks a million and uh, best of luck with everything. I'm going to remove you now from, from the main Perfect. screen. Um, Thanks a million. No problem at all. Thanks, Lauren.